One of the more asinine questions of media criticism is, does media influence people? Yeah, but that's right, it's not does consuming the media will make you supportive of the thing I find morally distasteful, it's does the media influence people at all. And yes, the question is asinine specifically because of moral busybodies telling other people how to live their life. As far as I'm concerned, the answer is yes, but in about as much as consuming hamburgers might make you a vegan, uh, humans are complicated little things. Each and every one of them has their own set of life experiences that tailors their beliefs. Some people might find it abhorrent to eat meat of other living creatures, especially if they have some sort of ethics code that they've grown up into or were predisposed before. Some people will shrug because realistically speaking, burgers are tasty and they don't really give a shit about much of the world outside of themselves and their circle of relatives and friends. Some people will find the idea of the first group existing to be violating their personal space, and so not only will they eat out of spite, they will also kill cows personally just to spite them. That's just how humans do. In my personal experience, the most effective propaganda is the one that doesn't really force you to engage with it and is also popular enough. CSI effect comes to mind, or the New Year's Eve movies they constantly showcase. I'm talking about this because you've seen the topic already. Shimanetta is one of those pieces of media that are designed to induce what I semi-chokingly like to call political awakening. You know, the stuff is like watching porn for the first time awakens some strange feelings in you that you've never knew before, and similarly one day you may see something that really resonates with you, be it some feminist cringe compilation or a post about why landlords are the spawn of Satan, and it's just sort of clicks with you. Of course, like with sexuality, there's going to be a period of experimentation before setting everything in stone, but these first things leave a sizable mark on you as an individual. The problem being, in this case, is that I don't think Shimonetta really tries being the daring social critique of censorship some people tend to think it is, rather it is a very obnoxious comedy that thinks it's smart. Basically, Shimonetta is a comedy anime about a world where censorship in Japan has won, all lewd stuff is banned, and having a lewd magazine may get you to be arrested and incarcerated. People are now wearing glitches on their necks that are smartphones and, well, an instrument for population control. A big part of the story is that the censorious fucks aren't happy yet still and they plan on introducing fucking chastity belts to the population as well as ban pretty much everything. This has resulted in the latest generation of teenagers being so clueless about human reproduction I don't think the Japanese people soon will even be capable of having sex at all. Hmm, how topical. Opposing this all are the main protagonists, who form a quote-unquote terrorist organization called SOX, and they just spread lewd stuff across the school they're in, signifying that the word terrorism, like oh so many things in life, has stopped meaning what it officially means and have entered the realm of being a shorthand for people I dislike. Something something better to live under a robber baron and all that. Well, and you already know my opinion about this anime, if not from watching other rambles about comedic animes, and definitely from the way I'm talking about this one right now, I dislike Japanese comedy. It is not funny. I didn't laugh. The show is not telling jokes, it just says the word penis and pussy for 12 episodes in a row, while the story about erotic terrorism is happening in the background. And ultimately, humor is subjective. Some people may find it funny to just say the traditional American pejorative word regarding black people out loud. Some people may find it funny that I described the n-word like that. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, because comedy lives or dies on the audience laughing. And I didn't. And as for the political messaging, which this show obviously has, well, uh, I find the socio-political talking points to be a bit useless when they don't actually explain what the hell do they want people to actually do with this information. Censorship is bad. I agree. It is nice to be able to express yourself in as many ways as possible, provided those ways aren't damaging the status quo too much. The fuck do you want me to do about it? Should I campaign with other people about the legalization of lollies? Should I vote for politicians who support freedom of expression? Should I craft a shotgun, assassinate the prime minister, and continue on my rampage until my demands are met? And that's the problem with political commentary. Make it too open for interpretation, and people will most likely ignore it, because as many people who played old adventure games may attest, trying to achieve something while only having a a vague idea on what to do is annoying at best and makes you just not want to participate. Make it too straightforward on the other hand and the powers above will hunt you down for rocking the boat too much. And that's about it really, I'm not in the mood to talk anymore, go away. Mm -hmm.